Hi guys, in this video, Jen and I are going to give you a rundown of the pros and cons of our Bungie Top tents. Yeah, we own two of these tents um, and we've had them for what, three to four years? Yeah, about that. So I think it puts us in a pretty good position to give you a pretty good critical rundown of them. Um, we're going to be pretty honest. Yeah. Pros and cons, as Rick said. Um, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to comment at the end of the video. Yep, cool. I reckon you should do the outside a little bit and I'll hop upstairs and do the inside. Sounds like a plan. Um, when considering buying a rooftop tent, Jen and I wanted something that would um, set up and pack down quite quick. Bungie Top Tent does that. Being electric, it only takes 18 seconds to set up, so it's fantastic. Um, another thing we wanted was a tent where you could keep all your bedding and your pillows inside. Now that tent fits that criteria. We've got um, electric blanket, two blankets and a doona inside the tent so it can store that in there without any issues. Um, the tent's obviously constructed of aluminium and canvas as you can see. It's built in South Africa. Now the tent has on top solar. We have a 250 watt solar panel so it has all the wiring for the solar already pre-installed. As you can see, the red plugs up the top of the tent, and the wiring runs, runs down on the inside of the tent, and then it comes out down here, and then obviously you plug that into your auxiliary battery to top up that. Um, this this connection here is for your 12 volt power. You can have both plugs in at the same time. Um, I elect to only generally during the day. I keep the solar plugged in, and keep the power out. That's just to stop anyone touching these buttons and making the tent go up and down and damaging it. Um, obviously if you're back at base camp then you can um, leave your power in and you know if you want to sit up there and do anything you've got power up there. Um, the t you can purchase awn uh, additional awnings for this tent which we have on the, the one that's on the camper um, so that gives a little bit more shelter um, so that's great, and that covers the ladder. The tent does come with the ladder, however it's constructed in two pieces and it's a little bit bulky and heavy. So Jen and I purchased a telescopic ladder that packs right down, it's easy to store. And um, yeah, we've mounted it onto the side of this one. Um, on the side of the tent, you'll, you'll see the up and down switches. Um, these two, round metal disc here are your electronic override so you got your positive and your negative so if there's any issues with the tent you can um, obviously still get it down um, anyway we'll go inside the tent and uh, we'll have a look inside there hi <laughs> so we've got a single light uh, in the middle of the tent obviously it's white light if you'd like amber, just put some orange cellophane over the top of it. I didn't. Um, <laughs> I'll show you how the tent actually works. Um, obviously it's a winch system, so you've got these four ropes, goes to each corner, and you've got these big um, arms that actually fold down using those ropes on a pulley system. Uh, if we follow it along, you can actually see here, it's just got this small winch motor. The blue strap that you see there is actually one that we replaced. It did come with a seatbelt style strap um, from factory and that actually snapped on us on, on a trip. Um, we think it was because a little screw was actually wearing away at it um, over time. We had a quick phone call um, to the company. They were going to replace it under warranty but obviously we needed to do it on the fly. So. Um, another phone call, it was Mark at um, Tough, Touring. Tough Touring in Queensland, great bloke. Uh, he just advised us to grab a two and a half ton uh, tie down ratchet strap from Bunnings and a shackle and fix it ourselves and we did. Um, had to learn how to tie some fancy knots but that was as hard as it got. Um, the rope itself, a Dyneema rope, um, do carry spares if you own one of these tents. These can break over time, obviously it's a working mechanism, uh, wear and tear. Um, Mark again from the 
um, tough touring. Tough touring. <laughs> I'll get it. Uh, he does some awesome videos on YouTube, so um, take a look at that if you do want to uh, look at it further. The um, just just on that, Jen. Yeah. Um, to replace one of these ropes, you need five meters. Um, so if you're going to carry spare, I'll probably carry two of them. So you get ten meters in length. You can get it off eBay and a few of the camping places. That's a great point. Um, the mesh that you get on these tents is actually not midgy proof. Um, so I did mention the amber light. At night you do get those tiny little flying insects coming in towards the light. Um, I haven't found it to be too much of an issue. I actually make a bit of a game of it killing them. Each to their own. Um, there is, I'll show you down here, there's a 12 volt socket in the tent. Um, so we've actually just put in a um, double USB adapter in there so that we can charge the phone and the watch overnight. Um, we actually do have as well some little storage pockets. There's two of those, one on this side, um, one down the other side of the tent, just for keeping all your essentials in. Uh, I think Rick mentioned about the windows, you can have them partially down with that external awning there. Um, so even in the wet weather, you can still get that good airflow in here, which is awesome. Talking of airflow, we do actually have two um, fans which come with this tent. I'm going to turn one, I'll turn this one on here. Um, you'll see they're a little bit noisy. It's not too bad. Um, and it does give off a good amount of um, air. Sometimes that sound is actually awesome if you're in a really noisy place. You need that white noise. Um, the mattress, it's um, what, 100 mil? 100 mil. It is a little firm, um, but we keep a couple of blankets on top of it and um, it just softens it up that little bit. Um, we, as Rick said, we keep a lot of bedding in here and the only consideration when you're packing the tent up is just where to pop your pillows because they're the bulkiest item. Obviously, because these arms do fold into the center of the tent, you don't want to have the pillows under those arms because it will make it difficult. Um, so we just simply reposition them near the doorways so to the one there like that that's as hard as it gets in terms of what issues have we had apart from that strap going on us um, which was a fairly big issue um, but easily fixed we did have a little issue with the limiting switch on this tent um, and in fact on the other one as well so the tent comes with limiting switches for the up and the down this one that sits up here next to the winch motor is actually the down limiting switch, which obviously stops the tent at a certain point. Now, the problem we had was the tent wasn't closing. It was stopping too early, and then we had to um, constantly fight with that limiting switch. So we decided to override it. Uh, it was a simple matter of taking the switch out, connecting the wires so that you've got a circuit. Not a problem since. Obviously, when you're putting the tent down, you take your finger off the button the tent stops going down. It's a bit of a no-brainer. Um, in terms of the up limiting switch, that's a little bit more important, I think. Um, that one's up here on the arm, a uh, little silver switch there. Obviously, that's important because you don't want to overstretch your canvas. Um, so we have not touched that one at all. Um, I don't want to say it, but we've had no problems with it either. <laughs> Touch wood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, the only other thing that we've had to fix on the tent um, is the ropes. I'm just going to unzip this window and show you. So these um, are actually elastics. Now this is obviously part of the packing up of the awning um, with the tent. This one here is one that we've replaced. So over time these elastics um, can snap. Um, this one here is one of the originals and look at that. It's a lot thinner. And you can see there it's actually lost a lot of its elasticity already now the reason that they snap is the wind so wind is going to pull this awning up obviously heavy winds are going to really drag that up and then snap back down and over time that can just wear away and they will break the other thing that can happen is those metal arms which actually make the awning extend can actually bend with that hectic wind as well uh, we haven't had a huge issue with that. I think Rick's just showing you that there now. Um, we have heard of people who've had a little bit of an issue with that. Um, now, these are super easy to replace. 
we went to Spotlight and got some good quality elastic. Um, as I say, it's a bit thicker than what the tent actually came with. Over here, you can actually see, this is just a simple knot through a washer. It goes outside, runs through a few um, different loops, and then comes back to the other side. Easy, it really was quite simple to fix. So we're gonna end up replacing all of these. I think we worked out that to replace all four is about 10 meters of elastic. The one we bought was about $3.50 from Spotlight. Um, and I don't think that's a big expense. And I think that's gonna last a lot longer anyway. Uh, anything else I can mention on the inside? No, you can obviously um, open up. <laughs> so you got the fly screen and canvas here, so you got that. Uh, yeah, I think that pretty well does it. Um, we will show you, uh, we'll use Rick's tent on the car to actually, we'll, we'll um, pack it down because it's up at the moment and we'll put it back up again. We'll do a quick demo of how that actually works and how easy it is. Um, I will say, because I was talking about wind, um, that's probably one of the other big issues that we've had and we didn't have the issue until this trip. Um, and as we say, we've had these tents for a bit of a while now. We were packing up the tent in some pretty gale force winds and we had a really big issue with that. So you do have to have one of the doors open. So we, we have this one open to pack the tent away. Now that's obviously to let all of the air out as it comes down, because it is quite a rapid descent. Now the problem with that is the wind's blowing in, ballooning the tent. Um, and over here, I'll just show you these little metal bars. These need to fold inwards. Now that helps the canvas to all collapse in the right um, way so that nothing gets caught. Unfortunately, with the wind ballooning it, it pushed it out and we ended up with a couple of bent arms. We actually did also end up with a very small hole in the canvas because one of the pop rivets um, tore at the canvas a little bit, which we patched. Now that is just now a consideration for us. Obviously, if we're packing up in windy conditions um, again, which we've had to do several times on this trip, South Australia is really windy, mm. um, then it just means while one of us is putting the tent down, um, holding the button, the other one of us is just keeping an eye on those arms and making sure that they fold in the right direction. If they're not, stop, have a look at it. You can just touch them and they fold in. It's not a uh, sort of no go for us. I think it's just a consideration to be had. We are not packing up in those winds very often. The tent itself stands up brilliantly in the wind. Um, obviously all rooftop tents are going to copper bashing in windy conditions um, but I think because of this really strong structure that this one's got with the four arms in each corner it holds really well it's just the flapping of the awning and you're going to get that with any tent aren't you I mean really um, so yeah that's that's not a hard no but definitely something that's something to consider the other thing uh, we wanted to talk about was the added room Oh and yeah, so we bought the um, extra walls for that external awning that we um, purchased as, as an additive to this tent. Um, we thought it'd be great to have that extra room outside. Now we did try it once or twice. What we found was the canvas being very strong, ripstop canvas, was very heavy. And if Rick, can you just show them that bar out there? That's the support bar for the awning and it's not very strong. So if when we had the weight of all of that canvas on that we had a bit of wind in Jindabyne um, the whole thing basically just collapsed the the metal beam bent um, popped out we were able to fix that we just bent it back into place but it's kind of made us say well you know what we're not going to do that again uh, so we don't use that extra room um, the other thing I will say actually with this extra added awning is the small awning the tent comes with this one, uh, the rain comes down off this and into this space. So you're coming up the ladder, you're standing down there under your extra awning. You do have rain dripping off this. It's a little bit of a design flaw in my mind, but again, it's it's just one of those things. You kind of grump about it a bit and then you get over it. So yeah, 
yeah other than that um the tent's been pretty good yeah so as we say um questions throw them at us uh we'll get back to you when we can we are traveling at the moment um but don't hesitate to leave a comment cheers thanks guys